here we go. Okay, so coronavirus. So I'm sure everybody's heard um, of the coronavirus unless you've been on vacation somewhere for the last a couple of months. Um, but coronavirus is a virus that's um, kind of spread and certainly has originated from um, the um, from China and uh, from Wuhan um, province um, and recently just named COVID-19 and I'm not sure if that's going to stick or not but that's the na new name that's been given as the COVID-19. Um, so you know the the coronavirus although um, affects about uh, affects a lot of folks, but is about 3%, um, has a 3% mortality, is no different as far as symptomatology than our common flu. So, um, you know, you get fever, you get cough, you get sore throat, um, nausea, shortness of breath, uh, but those symptoms are no different than your common cold or common flu. Um, how does it how does it spread? Again, no different than what we see with um, those folks who contract the flu, uh, meaning person-to-person uh, -person contact, coughing, sneezing, uh, uh, on those that are close to you. How do we prevent this? Wash our hands with soap and water. Um, you know, avoid uh, touching your eyes, your mouth, um, uh, or nose with unwashed hands. Uh, avoiding close contact with those who are sick. Um, and if you feel like you're sick, you know, I mean, just just common uh, practices. Stay stay home. Stay from school. Stay home from work, um, and and seek medical attention. And certainly. In specifics to coronavirus, if you have risk factors, and what are considered risk factors, of course, if you've been to China, if you have family, friends, coworkers who have been in the last couple of weeks and you develop symptoms, it's not 100% that you have it, but be smart and, and seek medical attention. Um, you know, and, and the other thing is not only seek medical attention, offer that history. Certainly, every person that comes and walks our emergency department and our clinics, we screen them uh, for do you have URI symptoms? And do we screen them for their travel history? Um, and we have questions in place, um, and not only um, trained our staff, but we have it built into our electronic medical system that has reminders to remind everybody uh, to ask those questions. Um, and uh, it, this is a, just a snapshot of our emergency department. And, and as you can see, um, right in the front, we have big signs that both in English and also in Chinese and slash Cantonese um, asking patients if you have these symptoms, if you have risk factors, please speak up and tell somebody right away. And should they have those, we mask those patients right away. Um, our staff have been, our infectious disease department, um, Dr. Martin and her staff have done an excellent job training our staff to be vigilant. And, and should the patients have those risk factors, what to do, and, and we have a whole um, team, if you will, that gets mobilized, and we uh, have um, you know negative pressure rooms where we isolate the patients. We work very closely with the uh, um, Alameda Public Health Department to follow their guidelines, who in turn get their guidelines from the CDC. Um, and in fact, I think I was talking to somebody, and we were actually commended for being so strict and on point with our protocols uh, uh, from the uh, Public Health Department, which is um, which is great. Um, and uh, I, I, this is um, one of the signs that's kind of blown up of what we have uh, posted not only in our triage rooms but outside when they come in for an intake. Um, you know, the resources that we use are again from the CDC, from the Public Health Department, from Alameda. The, the key with, with coronavirus, I can tell you, is no different than your common flu. However, if you have risk factors, be vigilant. I would even recommend if you're going to go see a doctor, call ahead of time say I'm coming in, or if you're gonna to come to the emergency department, call ahead of time and we're happy to meet meet you and get things started so we can better take care of you. Um, I do wanna commend our um, our infectious disease folks, our nurses um, for having such great um, ability to take care of these patients because truly, I mean, it, you know, there's been hysteria almost with the coronavirus, but I, I think what, what we're doing is not any different than what we did for MERS, what we did for, for the, the bird flu, what we would for SARS and what we do daily with patients who come in. I mean, before the coronavirus, we were masking patients and asking questions and isolating them. So I think this just kind of adds another level to that. And uh, I think we're doing a great job and I think we'll continue to do so and, and, and see where it takes us. Do you have anything to add, Dr. Martin? The only thing I was gonna say. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay. The only thing I was gonna add is, you know, we have been sort of anticipating a problem and basically coordinating multidisciplinary groups between nursing and pharmacy and environmental services and everything to try to get together and we didn't realize we were going to need to put that into practice but about two weeks ago 
we did. We had patients who were strongly suspect, and it was amazing to me to see how well coordinated this team did. I mean, they were, I was able to sort of sit in the back corner of the conference room and just able to see all the things that were going on. The ER handled it competently. We worked with CDC. We worked with the Alameda Public Health. I mean, and the family was happy that everything was taken care of. I mean, so I think we have, you don't realize behind the scenes what a tremendous team is going on here, taking care of something that turned out to be inconsequential, but was handled in terms of making sure that everything was done properly. They actually had a patient sent here because we had negative pressure rooms. So we're like a magnet, I think. But, you know, it, it was from top to bottom, from the administration all the way down to environmental services, everybody worked as a team, and it was so coordinated. I mean, it was amazing to see. It really was. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. I, I understand that um, our hospital and, and possibly others are having less incidents of admissions for flu during this particular flu season and I mean hopefully it's got a lot to do with all of the efforts to the public to uh, get flu shots and and wash their hands although I guess a flu shot does not work against coronavirus right right I mean yeah. it's not a uh, you know there has there's not a uh, vaccine for the coronavirus or is there a um, known um, antiviral medicine for it um, but you know uh, our immune system is pretty strong um, and um, again we don't know everything about coronavirus as far as who it affects most or not but if I had to guess I would say it's, you know folks who have um, risk factors you know yeah. immune compromised diabetes and such such yeah. and, uh, but the, the the flu itself the flu a and B hasn't been as virulent as it was last year that we saw mm -hmm. I mean last year a patient would come in a mercy department with <coughs> flu, I know that patient's gonna be admitted. Now, I admit maybe 10 to 15% of those patients. So yes, we're seeing flu, um, but we're not, it's not as, as virulent as it was last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly we haven't seen any um, confirmed cases uh, at Washington Hospital of coronavirus yeah. this year. Yeah, well thank you Dr. Halim, Dr. You. Martin, thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much.